On the outskirts of Mexico City, an 84-year-old man struggles to breathe. Primero la cabeza hacia acá, ¿vale? Paramedics hoist him into a capsule for safe transport. This neighborhood is a hotspot for coronavirus. Tranquilo, le estoy poniendo oxígeno. No tenga miedo, ya llegamos. Tranquilo. At the hospital, the patient's wife is forced to wait outside. Just the day before, she says she lost a son to COVID-19. Like most COVID deaths, his body was supposed to go straight to a crematorium. Only there's a wait. Crematoriums are backed up, sometimes for days. The government has consistently underestimated the death toll here. But handlers of the dead offer evidence that the region is becoming an epicenter for the pandemic. And it's getting worse. This is Nezahuacoyo, one of Mexico City's most densely populated suburbs. During the months of lockdown, many people here couldn't afford to stay home and not work, or just didn't want to. And the virus is hitting hard. The wait for cremation is so long, some families rent temporary interments like these. Funeral services barely keep up with demand. Uriel Bizuet maintains death records of all his clients. Obviamente ahorita pues subió la demanda tanto de equipo y de todo por lo mismo, ¿no? Que todo es como un probable. Aquí sí está un probable. These death records can tell us a lot about the virus's spread and suggest COVID-19 has been more deadly than the government admits. Probable COVID. Él murió por una insuficiencia respiratoria. Así es del primero de las que empezaron a salir. Ah, es el del 5 que te dije. Del, del 5 de marzo. De ahí empezó más o menos. For instance, this death on March 5th by acute lung failure, a hallmark symptom of coronavirus, occurred 13 days before Mexico announced the country's first COVID death. Bizuet wonders if the epidemic arrived earlier than the government said. In March, the cause of death could have been influenza. Without a test, it's impossible to know. 24, 27 contamos. Cuando uno que está de este lado de la línea de fuego, ves realmente Todas las situaciones, lo que está pasando, ¿no? Sí, o sea, esto está, está de loco, está fuera de control. To date, there are more than 11,000 confirmed coronavirus deaths in Mexico, but the true toll is likely much higher. Mario Romero Zavala is a data analyst and software engineer in Mexico City. He recently analyzed death certificates for the city and found that excess mortality, that is the number of deaths above the historical average, showed 8,000 additional deaths in April and May. Given our study, we can say that all the excess mortality is directly attributed to COVID, but there's a huge difference. We're seeing like a four times uh, difference between what's the official data for um, confirmed uh, COVID cases uh, of deceased persons in Mexico City versus the excess mortality in Mexico City. The people are getting the message that, that somehow we've passed the, the epidemic. And this is not true. This is absolutely not true. And it's a very concerning message to, to be given out. Publicly, health authorities keep saying we've made it through the worst. This was Mexico's deputy health minister a month ago. Estamos logrando reducir los contagios. Estamos aplanando la curva. Y se está logrando en cada uno de los estados. Now medical experts believe that the worst may be just beginning. Health analysts at the University of Washington project the epidemic could kill as many as 45,000 people in Mexico by the end of summer. This week, Mexico's president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, began easing restrictions to get the country back to work. Necesitamos ir poco a poco normalizando las actividades productivas, sociales, económicas. Amid these mixed messages, conspiracy theories have caught fire. Doctors told Miguel Angel Gil his father died of COVID-19, but he refuses to believe it. Yo no lo quería meter aquí porque escuchaba muchos rumores de que los doctores estaban inyectando a las personas adultas para que fallecieran. Que ese era lo del COVID. There's no evidence to support such rumors, and they complicate efforts to fight the epidemic. Gil says he slipped money to a funeral worker for a visitation with his father's body. 
Aquí en México todo se maneja con dinero. Tuve que darle dinero a la persona para que me lo dejara una hora. Y se pudieran despedir su familia de él. Government protocols for handling COVID cases prohibit that kind of contact and advise that all corpses be immediately cremated. But many families find ways around them as they aren't enforceable. Juana Parada Flores, an indigenous Mazagua, says she's following the rules and hires a funeral service to transport her father's body from the morgue to a crematorium. Or so she claims. Sí, sí lo vamos a quemar. No es nuestra tradición, pero si, si eso es a lo que se basa lo, el protocolo, vamos a respetar. Ms. Padara asks us not to follow her, but I learned later that she did not cremate the body after all. Like the family who paid extra for a funeral, she instead drove her father's coffin two hours outside the city and held a traditional burial service for the community. A Reuters videographer captured dozens of people attending. This is the sort of potential super spreader event that health authorities want to avoid. Ritos funerarios son una parte fundamental dentro de nuestras costumbres. Y esto, desde luego, la gente difícilmente acepta que no pueda seguir con esos ritos ante una situación de la pandemia que estamos viviendo. Hasta que todavía estamos en pleno ascenso de la presencia del virus. As Mexico reopens, the president's message is that even if danger still exists, the worst has passed. But the effect may be the opposite, that the worst is yet to come. <laughs>